just one NAND chip in the base M2 Air and Pro models. This has been repeated by all tech YouTubers since the release of Apple's new laptop. It's not as fast and powerful as we expected. And this is true, but those users who want to get the base M2 model may have a brilliant idea. Get this laptop, an external SSD like Samsung T5, and use it as the main drive, while the internal storage will be used for the OS and various apps. And it sounds like a way out of the situation. However, let's find out if everything is really that simple and whether it's possible to fix at least the one NAND chip issue with an external SSD. First of all, let's find out how the internal SSD in the MacBook works. The SSD in all modern Macs, starting from the M1, is soldered onto the logic board, and you can't remove it as easily as it used to be on previous Macs, when you could just open it up and replace the internal SSD. But now it's impossible to do so. But there is a secret. The craftsmen have already managed to resolder the SSD module, but it's not yet clear how effective this is. Anyway, if something happens to the internal SSD, your MacBook will turn into a useless piece of metal. Of course, you have a chance that Apple will replace the MacBook under warranty, but as a rule, this is always an individual case, so it really depends on how lucky you are. The following info may seem boring to someone, but in order to better understand this topic, you need to know how SSDs are made. A solid-state drive contains cells, or transistors, arranged in a grid pattern. If a chain of cells conducts current, it has the value of 1. If there is no current, it's 0. Applying a precise voltage to the cells, a unique pattern of 1s and zeros is being created. When reading information from a solid-state drive, it's not wearing out, because it simply checks voltage. But when recording to the SSD, when a certain amount of information is added to the cell, the oxide layer is wearing out. Any SSD has a limited lifespan. It's measured by the number of cycles for which the cells fail. And therefore, the SSD wears out. You cannot read information from it anymore. And as I said, when the SSD is completely worn out, the computer, in our case the Mac, dies because of the extremely difficult and I would even say almost impossible replacement of the internal drive. Of course, it's not a fast wear and tear process, but nonetheless. And we can always check its capacity in percentages to monitor the health of your SSD. And you can keep track of the condition as well as the available storage and the temperature of your drive using a product called CleanMyMac X, which is developed by a company called MacPod. And they are very kindly sponsoring this video. This app is designed to organize, power up, and protect your Mac. They just launched a new update with a completely updated menu. Now you can find more detailed monitors like the information about your Mac storage, state of protection, CPU performance, RAM and battery. So I can see that my battery is not in a good condition already. I definitely need to free up some space and Okay, my Mac is very well protected. So Clean My Mac not only increases your system's performance, but also includes malware detection and a proper app remover. This app is a big helper in my everyday process. So if you want to find out more about Clean My Mac X, click the link in the description and use the code Winer10 for 10% off. With the release of Apple Silicon, we get a bunch of elements in one small chip. GPU, CPU, unified memory, and many other things, which makes the new Apple chips so powerful. And this new architecture gives more options and opportunities for using the SSD. It means that the chip itself, no matter M1, M1 Pro, or M2, accesses the SSD much more often than before. It's not an extreme load on the SSD, but nevertheless, it affects the drive, and in some cases, it may wear out faster. It's even more critical if your computer has 8 gigabytes unified memory, this is usually not enough. So that the computer doesn't slow down, the swap is used. If the computer doesn't have enough memory to perform a particular task, it will compensate for this using the SSD. You as users don't feel this process, but it happens in the background quite often, especially when you run resource-intensive apps on the base MacBook model. And considering the one NAND chip in the base M2 model, the internal SSD is twice as slow. Swap requires more speed of the internal SSD than the base M2 can provide. Hopefully it's clear. At such moments, uninformed users get an idea to buy an external SSD and use it as the main one. It seems like you free up the internal SSD, not compromising the speed, and also save money. It may seem at first glance it's much more profitable to buy a MacBook and an external SSD than a MacBook with an already expanded memory on board. And this makes sense, but the idea is doomed to failure. Why? 
Let me explain. Of course, there is a benefit from an external SSD. You can easily save internal SSD storage, keeping in mind that it's recommended always to have at least 10 to 20% of free space, but will your M2 MacBook cope with the tasks easier? Yes, you can, for example, edit videos from an external SSD or compose music, or you can even transfer installed apps to an external SSD. However, the external storage cannot be used to speed up the system. Why? Because an external SSD cannot know what is happening in the logic board. Therefore, be used for swap storage. And we also cannot install an OS on it unless we're talking about using virtual machines. For example, Parallels Desktop, but even there, the OS is much slower if you install it on an external SSD. To make a long story short, you won't be able to use an external SSD without the built-in one. Let's do a little test just for fun, just to understand the key difference between interacting with an internal SSD and an external one. And keeping in mind that the speed of external SSD is certainly lower. So what results do we get? And I know you don't like it when I show video renderings as an example, because only we YouTubers do this. An ordinary user won't even consider it a real life test, but the render clearly demonstrates the load on the computer. We have tested two rounds of video renders with footage on the internal SSD and footage on the external one. And here are the results. Okay, but it's just a render. What about the editing process itself? The constant reading of files in the editing app is an intense process and it all depends on resolution, codecs, but in general you can certainly edit from an external SSD. But it's not a good idea to run heavy apps. Of course you will be able to launch it but it will take significantly longer and the overall performance will be much much worse. Sometimes you even get the feeling that you're working not on the M2 but on the old, I don't know, Pentium. As well as the convenience of using an external drive. With an external SSD, you won't be able to move around wireless. You will always have this thing connected to your MacBook. Of course, you can stick it to the back of it, but what are we talking about? This is extremely inconvenient unless you use your MacBook as a desktop computer in one place. Well, as I said before, Swap only works with an internal SSD. Here are some tests we did recently in one of our videos. To test this, I left the external SSD connected to the MacBook so that it would be permanently connected to the system. To begin with, I left the internal SSD almost empty with only the footage, project files, and apps. On the external SSD, of course, there's also enough free space. In general, nothing surprising is happening now. Everything works as before, nothing slows down, simply because there is enough free space on both SSDs. While opening various applications, the MacBook successfully uses the swap using the memory of the built-in SSD. Now let's completely fill up the internal SSD and check if the unified memory from M1 can use the external SSD, thereby bypassing the internal SSD because it's full. I left about 200 megabytes on the internal SSD and tried to open different applications. In each application, no matter if it's Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Lightroom, Xcode, or just a bunch of tabs in a browser, in each case, the computer does not have enough memory and it suggests closing some apps to free up the unified memory. This happens because the internal SSD is full and the MacBook simply has nowhere to take additional memory to support the system. You might have thought, what about the external SSD? And it feels great, just chill over there, it doesn't really care what's going on on this Mac, because it's just connected to it and it cannot be used as a replacement for the built-in SSD. Okay, what's the conclusion? I recommend you to buy the base M2 MacBook Air. Really? Yes, but only if you are a thousand percent sure that you won't overload your computer from head to toe. No resource-intensive tasks. Zero. And of course, you can consider buying an external SSD, but not for the purpose of improving performance, but only for the purpose of storing files or even storing the time machine backups. If you think that the 256 gigabytes SSD is not enough for you, then consider the option of 8 gigabytes unified memory and 512 or more SSD. So you will even give yourself the opportunity to put a little more load on the computer because despite the 8 gigabytes unified memory, the SSDs in these models are faster with two NAND chips, which definitely affects the performance. But if you are 100% sure that you need a Mac for hard work, well, the 14 or 16 inch M1 Pro is at your service. Why take the M2 Air for resource-intensive tasks, given that the M2 Pro should not be considered for purchase 
at all because it's an absolute copy but with a slightly better processor than the M1 Pro. But if you're wondering if I didn't have any MacBook in use now, I would consider the M2 Air with 16 gigabytes unified memory and at least 512 or even better, one terabyte SSD on board. And remember, an external SSD is not suitable for solving any performance problems. In the meantime, smash the like button if this video was helpful to you. Go ahead and click on this video and this one and see you in the next one.